don't know if that works, and if I... You don't Everybody will be loud enough. Uh, hopefully them and not me. Uh, I think most of you know me. I'm Big Dub. I'm Brian. I'm Big Dub. We have our members of Four Horsemen Studios here. And, yes, that's cool. and we're going to do a Q&A. Um, I do have a, a number of things that were solicited from people in the community that we can get to, but I think we'd also like to make sure that the folks here get an opportunity to ask questions. Um, we do have... Banana pudding, Biscoff banana pudding that Mr. Damien made. Uh, and Thanks, thank you. Everybody, if you'd like some, come have some. Please, anyone. It doesn't matter whether you, you know anybody in the room, come have some pie. Shepherd's pie. Not, yeah, you can have some. Fights. Uh, I think a good place to start is uh, let, let the folks introduce themselves, talk about their role a little bit so that people know what types of things you can ask questions about. Can you start with Jeremy? Uh, I'm Jeremy Gerard. I'm the director of sales and marketing for Four Horsemen Studios. So all of the public-facing stuff that you see is content that I'm bringing to you. Uh, I also get to do a lot of the writing with uh, Eric Treway, one of our founders and owners. He does all of the sculpting and kind of has created this world that I get to, to play in that world and kind of connect the dots for him. Yeah, that's, 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 that's To see that walking uh, in the room. Yeah, figures have entered the room. I am, uh, I am additional sculpting and painting and fabrication of the figures. Some design work here and there. You do a lot you more. more. You do a lot more than that. <laughs> <laughs> he does a lot more than that. I, I'm, I'm the workhorse. There. He loads the truck for the thing. He unloads the trucks at all the shipping dates. It's not the same thing. Stacks, <laughs> stacks things taller than anyone else, carries more than anyone at the shop. Okay, that, that's it. Right. I'm George Gaspar, I'm a project manager. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, you do more than that. That's pretty much it. No, you didn't. Really? Anyone remember Forge Horseman O'Clock? Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. George the, hates fun. And oh, he's yeah. the reason it's ish. I apologize yeah. for that as well. <laughs> we, we all do, actually. Me? Yep. Uh, Jim Preziosi, uh, original, uh, an OG with Eric and uh, CB, and basically I just try to motivate these guys to do the best they can, and they seem to come uh, to rise above everything that we want to do, so I'm very happy to be part of what these guys are doing. I think... Uh I think a lot, a lot of people I recognize here, but maybe some are, are unfamiliar. I think the thing that really sets apart the studio, for those of us that, that that type of fandom is the thing we like, is the community that is built while also being really, really hardworking and, and large output. You know, it's not, this is, we, we get a lot of great product that is constantly setting the bar higher and higher and higher, which I, one of the questions is, uh, came from, I think maybe it's Mal, do you, uh, it's one of your allegiance guys that we're just, that you ever get worried about. I've set a bit too high maybe to exceed the next time, but um, I think it's very unique that the quality product we get, and also these are the folks that are doing it, and we can sit here in a room with them, or and you can have the same experience if you walk up to their table. So I, I would like to give a round of applause to all the guys. <laughs> There were a number of you, the reason that we have a relationship is because of their work, their work. And uh, for so, so many of us, it exceeds a toy, a collectible, a display, a thing. It has created a community. And I, and I know you hear that a lot, but I think you can always hear it because it is, it's very important. And it's very important. That's Jeremy something, and I are a result of that. Yeah, yeah I mean, absolutely. that's something we talk about every, almost every day. And... Um, it's just a unique opportunity to, to bring this stuff to you guys, and it started organically and will continue to, to progress organically. You know, that's why we're trying to do as many shows as we can. Um, it's, just a, it's just a good thing to be involved in. Well, we are all grateful, I know. Now, the, I do want to start with a question that was sourced because it was asked the most. And it was a very some variation of this, whether it is, hey, we need a how it's made documentary on, on the life cycle of a product. People want to see, right? And especially this fandom that is, is pretty into it, are just fascinated about how does this happen? 
How do we get from an idea in who's ever had to a, a, a output product? So I think a little discussion about just the broad creative process, not, not in necessarily details. Certainly, I think we'd all like some sort of documentary, some sort of something that'd be tremendous. And, but, you know, what is it, how do we get to a G-Con where there's all these wonderful things revealed? Like, where does that start? What's the spark? I think it'd be an interesting thing to talk about. Who wants to say it? It's, well, the project, it's Eric's the pro brain. The project manager is one of the guys who, who handles a lot of that. So, I, I mean, most of it all, you know, it's Eric, Eric Treadaway's brain. That's where it all starts. Uh, you know, he's, he's dreaming this all up. He's the one creating, you know, almost all this stuff for, for everybody here. Um, like, without, without him, you know, we have, no. we have nothing to do. No. <laughs> so really, it all, all the thanks goes to that guy right there. Um, but then, you know, he brings it to the team, and, you know, whether it's him and Jeremy discussing, you know, storyline and plot and thinking up how the characters work and all of that. So it's designing, you know, designing the character from that sense, and then he's doing, you know, a large bulk of the sculpting, almost all of it. Um, you know, he'll, it'll go through sculpting, Prototyping. I mean, I, I I could go either really detailed and take the rest of the hour, or I can go really basic and just go as prototyping. I, I think detail, some detail. Like, do I don't like how, how much do you want to talk about this? Like how? Like I think we could spend a few minutes on. I don't think that's. I mean, it, it was asked like, a lot. I really like, feel like I'm sitting here talking too long. That's okay. okay. So yeah, somebody else, somebody else talk because I want to feel weird talking for that long. Jeremy, you like to talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the key is so like if Eric, Eric comes up with a concept and he designs it. But then it's kind of handed off to the team, right? Like, for a lot of To an extent. So, because we're following a story, the waves that we're putting out now, there's a logical progression of what part of the story do we want to tell. And in some cases, you know, you'll see a wave like Rising Suns that we just did. So, we need to have Atlas in that wave because he's an important part of that story. We need to have Scapular and Amir Kaspar, the wonderful costume that we have here. Um, there are certain characters that need to be in that wave. And then Eric kind of says, okay, how do I want to fill out this roster? What other types of characters do I want to create? And sometimes he goes in and it's very deliberate. Other times he discovers what the character is going to be as he's actually working. It's very, very flexible. So he'll come up with that. He comes up with the way it's gonna look, the paint colors, but it is a very collaborative process because once it goes out to the painters, you know, they'll take his guidance and sometimes they'll put their spin on it as well or they'll add things. Joe is actually very, you know, intuitive thinking about what extra parts can come with these figures. He'll oftentimes say, if we include this extra head or these extra limbs or these pieces, it will make this figure cooler and it will expand it so the figure has value for other figures. Mm. A lot of you know, Joe and I both started as customizers and fans of the line. So Joe, even more than me these days, thinks about these things from that fan perspective and trying to add more value and more parts that give the stuff more flexibility. So as the figures get built out, it really does, to George's point, start with that idea that Eric has, follows the storyline, add these new pieces from the, uh, the the group as a whole, but on top of all of that, the theme is, I want to make a cool toy. That is really, I think, where it starts and ends, is Eric wants to make a cool toy. We want to make cool toys. I know you said in the past that uh, you don't necessarily consider, oh, this is now going to have uh, new articulation or new tooling. You just make what you want to make that's the best representation of that idea. But you do also have things like the builders or things that are seemingly intentionally like we're gonna we're gonna use what is existing to create this or some of the the um, exclusives. Do those also come follow that same path? Or I know at times it's like oh well Jeremy put this together or Joe put this together. So is there certain windows in a release or whatever fill in the blank? It's like all right, what existing parts do I have? Can I make something? Cool? Can I in essence create a pop create my own custom? That then gets released is kind of what's happened. Is that is that part of what happens too? Yeah, for sure. Again, it depends on the wave. So a big, you know, like milestone wave like Rising Suns that is filled with new tooling. Other waves like what you saw for All Stars Five, 
where there were new characters in there that included a lot of existing parts. Or there's a wave that you're going to be seeing. We're not going to slip up, right, John? We're not going to reveal something. <laughs> Today. Slip up. You're going to see, you right see now. waves that use a lot of existing parts to create new characters. So it really, the answer is ultimately yes. There's a lot of different ways that we approach how to create these figures based mm -hmm. on what the needs of that figure is. Is it? Is Eric redoing an important part of the library, like a whole new night build, a whole new skeleton build? Or is this a wave that we're looking to leverage our existing library more? And again, you know, we do a lot of that where you identify parts where you say, hey, instead of this, let's use this because this isn't out as much. And I think that our fan base would enjoy getting more of these particular pieces of armor or weapons or heads or whatever in the market. Right. It's something that's always been taken under consideration is having multiple looks per character. And you know, depending on the design, how intricate it is, how many parts it has. Um, one figure could just be two easy pieces away from making like a, a no-name army builder type to just thinking about like, all right, this flesh tone hasn't been used as often. Um, let's use those parts and it'll go with something that came out four years ago and people can do something that they wanted to do for a long time, finally. And it'll also make another character that uh, maybe not be as prominent in this way and just try to make as much sense of it and bring as much value to what um, people can get out of these and not to have too many pieces in the fodder bin left over I, whatever I suggest to put in there I'm trying to make sure it's like it's thought ahead like what can people get now and what is out there in good quantity where people may have I don't know not giving anything away let's say they have a lot of dwarves let's I mean dwarves <laughs> Um, what parts would go well with a very common figure that will just like help to elevate it a little bit more, whether it's like, you know, uh, an additional weapon or armor piece or just a, a, selecting a color that goes with something else that can make all the difference. So that's the kind of stuff that we just think about when it goes into the design, like really just customizing a little bit ahead of time for people who aren't comfortable painting or don't want to learn or think they can't do it because they haven't tried yet. A lot of them can, just don't know it, honestly. Um, but yeah, just all that type of thought goes into these outside, just like the initial design of the character. You know what, I'd, I'd like to just go back for a second. I don't think something that you brought up wasn't properly answered, and that is, are we concerned that as we elevate our figures from with adding soft goods and all this other stuff, we concern that we can't top ourselves. And you know, being all the years I've been in the toy industry, we've many years working for Mattel. Um, if you ask me about those type of properties, I would say yes, they're because you're repeating what's already been done, and you you don't necessarily have as a receptive audience to new stuff. Whenever we did uh, Master of the Universe, like, you would always want to try to make it like for a new audience and stuff, but the old audience was always, that's not the way it's supposed to be, and they were always arguing about, and Mattel and, and that property never could get back off the ground again. So when we're doing this stuff original, sky's the limit. We can't, so there's never a concern of uh, do we have anything good left or anything like that? Absolutely, because it's, it's all newly created. So these new figures that come out, it's not everyone may hit you like where you want to be is like, oh my God. But over the year or whatever, there's going to be a few that if you're into this stuff, you're going to be like, oh, I can't wait to get this one. So... Yeah, I mean, obviously there's a tremendous amount of pressure for us to do the stuff that people want, but we have this unique uh, situation that I don't think anybody else has, that we have you guys that are in the cabal and going to shows like this and talking to, you know, anybody that's behind the table, and that all gets, re you know, reported back and we talk about that kind of thing. Um, you know, from a business standpoint, do you want a bunch of people that work for you talking all the time? No.
But you know what? They're always talking about the stuff. They're always talking about, if we add this more, let me call Jeremy and see if he's up cool with that. It's, it's a great environment. And, I, you know, I'm just blessed to be part of it. I really am. And I'm really happy to be down here. To, to enjoy it with you guys. We are, we are so happy that the second year of you've been in, in Atlanta here. That's it's great for us. And I would say, for those of you that aren't aware, interns intern lottery is open actively mm -hmm. yep. right now. So if you would like to have an opportunity, uh, it is a drawing, and, and there's other things you can find. We can get you that information. That anybody will help you. Um, you get to go learn what it's like there. And, and Jim walks you around and you sit there and you watch Eric sculpt live in front. It's amazing. And you really get to feel the environment that we feel right out there is felt in there too. It's it's not I I when I, I went for my first time in November and I fully expected it to be like, well, I'm not my work. <laughs> or it's because it's work. You know, we got a ton of profit. And, and it's like, you know, this feels like a family too. And you can tell by the way your that the you know, your employees are that it's it's passionate and that's yep. You it's can see me sit at my desk live. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. It's awesome. It's kind of like this. Kind of like this. <laughs> if people in the room have a question, let's line up beside Cullen, if you have one. That way I can, because it would be impossible for me to call. Hey, yeah, Cullen right here. Maybe Cullen, raise your hands. So and, and, and we'll keep talking. But it, it, you can ask anything you want to ask. I can't promise you that somebody can answer. And if they don't answer, I'll try. You, might, you can't trust it. Um, so I think one thing that's interesting, maybe, maybe, uh, George, this is, this is your, so let's say we get an idea, we get it sculpted and, and Sherry or Cameron or Joe, whomever, paint it. And now it goes to the factory. I, at least, am curious, what's that process like when here's a, here's a, this is what we want. Here's our painted item and it goes to the factory. What's the type of detail that's given? Like, is it, it's this color red and this color blue or, or do they just figure it out? No, I mean, the reason you do the Paint Master is so that they can match the color exactly. We, we don't need to be calling out Pantones or anything like that because we're going to send them the physical piece and they're going to take it and they're going to match it exactly what we have. And I, I actually get surprised sometimes when we send this stuff over how, how close and exact it comes back. Like, if you, if you send over something with a paint smudge on it, they're going to send it back with a paint smudge. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, well, they're, they're they, gonna match. That's how Torgan got a dirty nose, right? Probably, yeah. it didn't leave I, like I think uh, Torgan, if everyone's ever wondered why does Torgan have like dirt on his nose, it's because I was told the paint master I, was I'm dirty. I'm pretty sure, yeah. yeah and they painted it. Right. That's what yeah. I was they, they, will, they match <laughs> what you said. So it, it, you got, it's got to be perfect when it leaves the house. And you guys have strong factory relationships, I'm sure, because that's like anything else, you want to make sure you've got the, the right folks. Now think about like CJ's soft goods. And you just like, okay, here's this thing that's created that he's, that they handmade. And it just, in my mind, I'm like, oh, and it just gets shipped to China. And they're like, okay, I can make that. Yeah. It's remarkable. It, 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 it really is remarkable. That's what they're it's great scary. at. Yeah. It's yeah. making anything you send them. Yeah. Yeah. I worked with a company doing some soft toy designs before. Yeah. And it was for NASCAR BD. And the, uh, the guy that I was working for made the mistake of taking one of the mat, one of the, the proofs that he had gotten back to get Mark Martin to sign it, and Mark Martin signed it across the, the head. Well, that was the master he was supposed to send back, so he sent it back. When he got the next production proof, it had an autograph. <laughs> right across the, the, the thing. So yeah, they will take everything, absolutely, literally. It, that's that's a hundred percent true. Like there's like there's time. I mean, I think didn't we get something with so, Chris's signature on the back? One so like, for <laughs> All Stars six, we're doing Azar again. We took one from our inventory because we still have like a couple of each of just about every figure that's been made. Um, and he wrote on the back like some. I think it might have said OG like original. And we sent that one to the factory just to make sure like hey, this is what you're going off of. And they sent back. The paint sample, and it had, as he had written in the sharpie on the back, OG, or, or something to that effect. They were like, that, they, "Why did they send this back to us? It's the same one." We're looking at it. And I'm like, "Oh, I, I did a test to see if it's a sharpie or not." I'm like, "Oh no, 
on the thing. They did that. So it's like we need to be very careful. So before we send stuff out, we get a good look at it. Sometimes it needs a little touch up if it's been the shows, that sort of thing. Um, Trevor does awesome work, but because these things are very fragile, every now and then a scrape may happen or so. So when they come back, we give it another inspection before we send it out to try to avoid that sort of situation because. You know, it just every little thing that needs to get changed kind of sets us back a little, and they try to get every little bit of it. That's so interesting. And it's yeah. such well, a talent. George, I think it's also worth mentioning that we now pay two of everything. Yes. Yeah. So when we send a master oh. to the factory, when they send us back that paint master, we have something that was painted exactly at the same time as the one we sent them right. to match it against. To the point that if you came by our table over there, and I'm sure y'all did, the retailer wave that's in the case, those are factory paint masters. So we had set those to them, and that shows how far along that wave is, but that's the type of stuff that they send back to us. And as far as the manufacturing <coughs> stuff goes, we probably you guys are probably going to see some cool videos coming in May <coughs> and after that because... In a couple of weeks, George, Chris, and I are heading over to China to visit the factories, try to, you know, up the schedule to make sure that, you know, some things happen this year that we want to happen this year. So hopefully with some help with tooling and some help with production, we're going to try to get <coughs> caught up a little bit more. So uh, we also plan to bring one of those little cameras there that are super cool <laughs> and take as many videos that we're able to take so you guys can see exactly how the stuff is made. Yeah, I think that's going to be very well received. It's, it's, it's great that a fan base is into it like that. Cause oh, yeah. A lot of things people aren't. So that's that's your main lines, your mythic cosmic that, that are being created in essence out of so, but for something like Figura Obscura that is is based on a something that exists, does, how does that creative process alter? You know? So with that, there's a very large list that Eric and I have of potential Figura Obscuras. Um, and we're adding to it all the time. So there's points like Eric knows when he has to start sculpting something based on when we want to release it. So he knows because figure is totally different than our normal lines, which are pre oil That has to be sculpted, painted, sent over, tooling done. Like everything has to be done so we can get it produced, have it in hand to drop it as a figure. So we know when we have to start talking about it. Eric looks at the list, and quite honestly, it's what he's excited for. When we first started doing figure, Eric said to me, if I ever have to force myself to sculpt one of these, I'm doing it wrong and I'm done. I have to be passionate about it. He would rather skip what is a penciled in figure and drop on our schedule than force something that he's not excited to do. So figura is very much Eric being passionate about a certain thing and it's a nice deviation for him too yeah. from the internal it's stuff. like a break of it is. and all the other stuff he gets to have fun and play with it for a little while to get something that he wants to do it's a cover song yeah <laughs> yeah he gets well, to put his own spin on something that exists as a cover yeah. well as an artist one of the scariest things is a blank canvas right when you have no constraints it's like okay i can go anywhere so sometimes it's hard to figure out where you're going to go when he's doing a figura he has constraints because if he's going to do headless horseman there are other interpretations about Headless Horseman. How do I borrow from those but still make it uniquely for Horseman Studios? Mm -hmm. I, I almost used that analogy earlier, thinking about the when you're talking about the, the freedoms you have because you are creating from nothing. It also gives me such an appreciation for the work even more because so tonight I'm gonna sing. And I'm gonna sing Journey Don't Stop Believing. And it'll be terrible, but it'll be fun. But if they just said, just make a song and sing it you'd be like, oh, wait a second. That's a completely different skill set than can you cover song something. And then maybe you have the talent to do it, maybe you don't. But just to come from something from nothing, uh, is, especially when we're in the, just the, <laughs> the golden age of nostalgia IP, where most things in this hobby are another version of a thing that already existed. I think it's so unique and, uh, and appreciated. 
But I do, one thing that I'm not sure that a lot of people know is the studio does still work on other projects outside of these three lines. And, and I, you know, sometimes I'm surprised if you look closely at your credits, you're like, oh, so that's Four Horsemen Studios, you know, contributed to fill in the blank thing. I'm not sure that that's always as disclosed. So I don't want to mention anything. But how, how does that process work, too, where you're, you're contacted to work with something else like you have for so many years? Interesting. That's more of a... At this point, we're lucky enough. It's more of like, do we know those guys or what are they trying to do? Like, you know, I know we've done some stuff for, is the Animal Warriors we did or yeah, the who's Plunderlings? The Plunderlings, Plunderlings we did stuff for. You know, it's just people that we know that are um, doing Kickstarters or doing their projects. We did a ton of stuff for Super Seven, all those companies, and it's just more of. Um, you know, to be out there and to have our stuff. Some people come and like, this is exactly what I want. Just reproduce exactly what you see there and I'm happy. And some are like, try to, you know, put your own spin on it. And if it works for us and it works for them, we do it. Um, so we're lucky when it comes to that outside stuff. And, you know, we're very proud of the stuff we do for the other outside people. You know, we want to make them happy. They have some kind of goals as far as, you know, uh, like I said, the Kickstarter or uh, just wanting us involved, and we're more than happy to do it. We, uh, Jeremy and Joe were at my house the other night, and, and Joe and I were walking around, we showing him my display, and he pointed at an item, he said, I painted that. And I, I was like, it's a, a, an item I already love, and it makes it even more appreciated. Yeah. And it's like, you just don't even realize. And then as I... I've learned, because uh, CB put out that list last year, the year before, that was, here's all the things that, which is an exhaustive list, and you start looking for it, you go, oh, that's just my house. You just, have, it, it, my house has been designed by the studio at this point, but it, it really is cool. I would encourage you all to look into some of, like, your favorite toys over the years, over the last 25 years, right? Yeah. And, 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 and look at how many things that, you know, members of this team over the years have had a, had a part in. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's really cool. I, I need to shout out Bill Mancuso and Sherry Cook. Um, seeing the work that they've done, like finding out that they've worked on things that like my mom and dad were buying for me as a kid, but they've been in the game for so long with outside of the horsemen. It's just incredible. I've walked around with toy sh at toy shows with Bill, and I would see something and be like, oh, I used to have this. I love it. He goes, yeah, I made that. <laughs> like, no, no, you're joking. And he goes, no, really. I'm like, all right, prove it. And he goes, all right, look on the back of it. Like, the left side's higher than the right. <laughs> like, you're kidding. It just happens consistently. So it's like being part of the legacy of the work that people in the studio have done over the years is... It's a trip. Yeah. I've it, walked around with Bill. I've walked around with Bill at shows, and he doesn't. It doesn't come across like egotistical. Like no, not at all. I did that. I remember walking around and seeing Spawn Series One Tremor, and if you know this figure, it's like a demon-looking figure that's got like a robotic arm. And we were walking around, and Bill says, "Oh yeah, I remember drawing all that type of stuff on there." Or you know, Jim. You fabricated the spawn mobile back in the day. Yeah. Like hearing about those things, day. it's wow. it's like being in a museum with you know an exhibit that's curated and the stuff you're seeing, you're walking around with the people that created all of that. It's it's definitely a cool experience. So I mean, if you're a turtle guy like me, the in, in the modern turtles, the very difficult to get NECA 2008 Mirage turtles, the horsemen. Yeah, and that was a the last night was a, a that blew my mind. We <laughs> were in somebody's room upstairs, and they had loose ones, broken, eight hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, what? <laughs> I was like, you know, and, and that's part of and and I'm not really a collector, so it doesn't really bother me when I look and say, oh, I could have gotten. Ten of those, if I want, I could have had this, and I could have had. I mean, all my Spawn stuff. I was like, Toys for Tots or whatever. I gave. I don't have anything. I mean, I have a couple figures that, the the ones I keep are the figure obscure ones. You know, I mean, there's no better Christmas 
decorations and Halloween decorations than, than that stuff. That to me is is yeah. super cool stuff. But uh, yeah, that those those. I did hear rumor that you did make a purchase in the room rooms <laughs> last night. I did yeah. hear rumor. Yeah, I, I found a, a you know a vintage a jart. Uh, set, you know, long dark thing. <laughs> the, the band one that, like, with the metal spear. Yeah, yeah, with the, the metal, metal spike. Yeah, yeah. Metal oh, boy! Yeah. 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 We're playing, right? Yeah. First first We're room playing. sale, first guy to buy something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can take shots with each with each round. <laughs> and, and, I mean, we're, we're all, wait, we're very happy that Toilana has us here, that these shows that we have, like Toilana, that have that room, it is quite a unique memory to say, this is where I bought this, yeah. off somebody's bed, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. 9 o'clock at night. <laughs> yeah, we have a room, room sale, you've got to try it. And boards in the, main, in the main lobby, just go to people's rooms and look around their stuff, it's cool. <laughs> Not first. I, Not first. <laughs> yeah, I would take a picture. Yes. Yeah. I would not just assume because the little uh, uh, deadbolt lock is in the door oh, that no. they're necessarily selling action figures. They yeah. may also be waiting for someone to join them or whatever. <laughs> no, way they have action. no, you do not have action figures for sale. <laughs> These are not the toys. I didn't, find, I didn't find any of those rooms. No. <laughs> we were out a bit late. <laughs> I heard you say, yep. Does Anybody have a question you want to bring up? I still got plenty we can talk about. If not, nobody has forced anything. Yeah. No. So, just just in general, you guys have been doing this for a long time. Did you think it would get to where it is now? You know, like absolutely. absolutely. You just created something and you're like, let's just do this. You know what? We talk about this. Uh, you know, earlier, the there's two levels to what's going on. It's obviously the action figure level, and that's what we started you know, 10 years ago on Kickstarter. There was nothing more than that. And then the banter back and forth with the chat of the Kickstarter. Um, it's not until Walter started his Facebook page and continues it now, the Cabal. And it created this environment, I don't know if it was during the pandemic and people were reconnecting with certain things, I'm not sure, but it just started this group that has grown and now people that are buying our stuff I'm, I just like I I just get blown away because I go to the post office with stuff because the mailman don't they don't pick our stuff up all the time so I throw it in the back of my truck I bring it and I look at the names and stuff and I'm like I used to know everybody's name on the thing we knew certain customers you know they were a little bit picky about what they wanted and we, we kind of knew everybody but now I'm looking at all the names and all the addresses, and I'm like, God damn! I, it's, just, <laughs> it, it's it's very it's very surreal to me. We still know all the picky names. But to answer your question is is no. I mean, obviously, you go into everything with those uh, expectations. I was more, I would have expected something that would have happened in 1999 than I would have expected in 2019, you know, oh, that kind of uh, expansion like that. I thought I was done for at that point, you know, I thought I was going to be like, all right, guys, we'll see, it was a nice 20 years, but now it's just like someone put our, like a skyrocket underneath you and now we're, we're trying for more. And now it's more like the younger guys that are working, you know, that have been brought up. That's their, that's going to be their, their legacy is to see where we can bring this in the future. I'll add something to that real quick. So I was talking to Tanya this morning, actually, and we were talking about like last year's G-Con and the reaction that the bear got when it got brought out, how impressive that was. And I mentioned on that note is, did you ever expect this? One of the things I love about working with Eric is he'll put out stuff that we are like, this is so cool. And when the <coughs> crowd reacts to it, when the community loves it, he's genuinely surprised. Yeah. Like everything he puts out there, he's like the definitive artist that's putting something out there, hoping that people are going to love it. Incredibly happy when they do, but also surprised when they do. It's very, he's a very humble type of creator and that permeates the rest of the company. When when uh, Allegiance Con last year, and I was this is <coughs> fortuitous, but most of you now that I know the Valiant Knight, it's it's 
been available this weekend, but it was the I think the first ever surprise. Here it is on the table. You can buy it. Uh, drop, and I just happened to be standing in a corner because what I like to do when I'm when I'm covering a, 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 something that the horsemen around is I like to see the table start because I think it's interesting <coughs> to see all the people in the line and, and how excited everybody is and it's it's so it's so full of joy. But I'm just standing here, and I see that figure sitting there, and I'm like, hey, I don't know what that is. And then Eric comes and walks, and he stands right beside me, and I'm like, oh, he just wants to talk to me. He's just here to hang out, and I realize, oh no, he's very laser focused at that part of the table. <laughs> and so I'm able to catch on film the first customers getting that and seeing like the joy in his face because of how happy everybody is. Like, you can't fake that. And that's a, a you know founder of the company and, and you guys seem like you're just as happy as the person getting the thing because it brings joy. And you know, like, look, Life is hard. Any era of life has been hard. So moments like that that can bring joy to people are worth more than anything. And I, I, I loved, I, it was such a fun moment to see. Because you're like, you would think by now it would be easy for you guys to wrestle on your laurels. Hey, you know, we got a great fan base and we'll put it out and they'll like it. And we know they like it. But it never feels like that. It just never feels like that. It's like we got to put out the best thing we can and we want the people to like it. We want it to matter. And I don't think you can fake that. I just don't think you can. Not, not, in, not in consumerism. You can't fake it. It's, it's got to be genuine. Very good. Well, not to take anything away from me, but we we have to like it too. Yeah, because <laughs> we all like we all collect a lot too. So like we we want we want really cool stuff too. And that's what makes it awesome though, because y'all are collectors as well. Yeah. 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 And just you to give you a little insight yeah, uh, on how I roll. When after all that was, I was like, "What was that interest in that? What that silver knife for?" <laughs> um, I was just wondering, do you guys like start with concept art, or do you just go straight into the sculpt thing? Eric goes straight into the sculpt. It's also Ted yeah, Lasso asking the question. It's, 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 it's very. <laughs> he has done some sketching. He does do some sketching. Yeah. But especially now that he's sculpting digitally, he has said before that. He finds that sketching it in advance, he might do some really, really rough stuff, but he doesn't get high fidelity in the sketch. He wants to get right into ZBrush pretty quickly and start working there. Okay. Yeah, I, there's... if you get a chance to see it at Intern, because I, so we had a, we had an idea that our daughter was interested in this type of head, and he asked, "What do you want me to sketch?" And I, I raise my hand, I say this, and he's talking just like this the whole time, nonstop. And you blink in 45 minutes, he's got this thing from nothing that he didn't even know what he was going to be asked to do. Yeah. And you're like, okay. He, he can that's, so. that's, that's a very big talent. Yeah. yeah. There, I, there are things that he had, like, notebooks for when he was in elementary school that have just evolved with his skill and his ideas that we will eventually see. When he was like this big to not that much bigger. There's <laughs> one on the table. You know, it's, just, uh, it, it's just amazing to be able to to see the progression of like where it started and where it ended. And yeah, he's, he's just crazy creative. There's a figure, but still, yeah. It, it, you were pointing out there's a figure on the table of Cosmic Legions called Kanox Vol. That's like a purple mm -hmm. cyborg yep. that Eric sculpted, not sculpted out on sketch when he was a little kid. Yep. We have an article on our website that shows the original sketch and I always love it shows when I introduce that to people because if you look at his bio, it says the character's from a, a, an affiliation called the Red Spiral. He originally sketched it in a Red Spiral notebook. <laughs> which, which he still has. Yeah. Like, dude has everything still. Still has that red spiral notebook that he sketched in. He's got that K-Dog sketch. I'll clean up. We have a storage unit, like in a, kind of like a loft area, and it's just freaking file boxes of old papers and folders and stuff. And at one point in my earlier days, I was asked, like, it's a mess up there. Go up and organize and clean it. And I'm just like, all right, what's in this one? And it's like old McFarlane drawings. Of like Wetworks characters. Oh snap! Oh, that's cool. Yeah, like every like the front, back, every little detail. Here's the werewolf and and sketch. It's just amazing. So to see what he can do like by hand and then digital. It's just like it's it's insane. So I think it's always with, been. So we we talked about it's the twenty fifth anniversary of studio and the tenth anniversary of Mythic Legion as a line. And I, I think talking about that story, one of the things we started to see. Um, 
in the last few years is really the expansion of the world itself, of the, the bios and the stories being longer and, and more detailed, but then also other things coming out, you know, so we, we have pens, but then you get, um, you get more of the, the things that, that have been talked about, the book that was rumored, and then the, the more the history book that you announced last week at Muskegon, if I ever said that right, and the things like the skateboards, and I mean, even like in Cosmic Legion, the, I don't know what it's properly named, but the kind of accessory set that has the crates and stuff. So like world building, Broadly, not with the figure line, but then also with the line and the expansion of the IP to it, to, it, to other product lines. Um, is that, you know, I know you have the two books you talked about. Is that the desire of the studio is to stretch into uh, those kinds of avenues outside of just the action figure world? You're asking when's the underwear coming? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a sleep set. Because think it's, not <laughs> it's I think it's interesting that there's some things like the t-shirts that are with a park that's doing it. Or like a lot of the art is coming from Trevor or coming from Nate. But then some of this stuff is the studio selling directly, which is newer. And I think also like with the lore and everything really has great and it, it sucked me in even more. I think a lot of us because the story is filling out, and it's so, so like that book, I'm significantly excited for it because it's the story, and it, and it's again everything that makes us feel like a bigger part of this thing. Uh, I think just you know the rising tide analogy, right? It just keeps growing. So what what's coming from the not necessarily? I know you can't answer what's coming, but sure. that that side of things. Well, I think there's two things you're asking. So the other types of products that we release for the brands, that's actually a big part of that is George. You know, George enjoys creating pins and skate decks and stickers and all these other things that <coughs> are part of the, the, the lifestyle brand that's been created around Legion. So that is a piece of it for sure. You're gonna to continue to see more of that. The other thing is like the book. So one of the challenges is whenever we meet people at shows like this who don't know what the property is, they come up and they say, what is this from? Is this a comic book? Is this a movie? Is it a video game? And we always say, we're actually working on a video game and a comic book and a book and all those things. But when you're going to tell stories, you tell them the way you know how. If you know how to write comics, you make a comic book. If you're a filmmaker, you make a movie. They're toy guys. So the stories they wanted to tell, they told them through stories. So we kind of did it in reverse. But the challenge with that is when you buy these toys, you buy them because they're a cool looking character. But you may not know the depth of the story in that character and how they play in the world. So I'm super excited to get like that lore book out there so you can start to actually read how these characters interact, who's important, and really what the story of mythic regions and cosmic regions looks like. Yeah, I think so with, uh, with the evolution of the brand, I'm one of them, and I know a number of my friends, when, when the first horsemen came out, it's like, oh, cool, the four horsemen are doing the four horsemen, not mm -hmm. the rise of the dark four that's this story. It was just like, oh, that's cool. They're, they're just kind of making right. pestilence in it. it, it's, it but it has an actual, very important plot element, you know, so if 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 the right opportunity presented itself for expansion into fill in the blank. I, I think when maybe when you were on with someone, maybe it was me, you mentioned that like a cosmic comic book or a graphic novel could be a thing yeah. that could exist. You know, if the right area, the right let's just wave the magic wand and Disney says, hey, we're ready for the Disney Plus Mythic <laughs> Legions, which is not realistic, right, because it's their own IP, but is there, would conversations be had, I guess? Or is it more, no, we really want to stay in this lane purely? There's always a time yeah. for a conversation. You know, I mean, I, the, the directive now is, <clears throat> as far as going back to the lifestyle brand and all that stuff, we want to try everything. You know, we want to try like we've done with the skateboards and, we may not continue to do them in house if they if they're popular and someone comes up and says, "Listen, you know, I'd love to license these and do it." We may go on and move on to that, but we want to try as many things as we can to, you know, have you guys 
you know, if you enjoy Mythic Legions and you want to have a mouse pad, we want to yeah. sell you a mouse pad because it's just part of the whole package. Um, you know, I think that, as of course, if it's something that you would say, is that really in the... We want to try to kind of, at, at the studio, we want to continue more with the, <clears throat> the stuff that we do well. The figures and all that kind of stuff. So if it's more of a figural thing, we'll probably want to do it ourselves. But if it's something a little bit more on the fringe that we our talents really don't match up with that, then we'll look for a partner that'll help us get that out. You know. So hopefully in the next few years, there's going to be a ton of different things. You know, that are just fun. You know. And I, I think you're also seeing more of it now because, I mean, just a few, even just a few years ago. There was only, you know, six people working there. They, and they had, they were at their limit of what they could do, but they've, you know, they've gone to a point where they've hired us all on. And, you know, when you bring in more people, there's a little bit more opportunity to try other new things and a little more time that we have to, like, you know, try other things like the pins and the things. I mean, we tried pins. I tried pins for them years ago. PowerCon and Scapular pin came out and you guys just weren't collecting pins yet. You know, like it just, it sat. And then we brought Scapular back out from a box that Joe found in, when he was cleaning in an office. And I was like, wait, you still have those pins? And he's like, yeah. And there was almost the whole run was still there. And we put him out and you guys were like, oh, pins. And so it just, it was just a timing. It was like, it was a complete timing thing. Like it's, it's, you know, it's, it's different, different You should have just hit him and had him like filter them out on eBay. I mean, Shh, don't say that. <laughs> I'll let you guys. Not our you guys that's do the eBay part. Yeah, no. the, the goodwill would go away. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. think that's one of the things that I know very specifically with a very popular item that has recently released from a company that one of the distributors has done a thing like that because its aftermarket went really high, really fast, and chose not to fulfill some pre-orders to sell it for more. And, and that's going to burn. Like that customer never comes back. Yeah. They don't ever come back. Yeah. And that's, yeah, it's not, it's not. Well, we're not interested in that. We don't want to make an extra $10 on yes. a thing when it's like, well, no. it's like, we're selling it for what we sell it for. It doesn't matter. One that's, thing I did want to just add to what was being said about having the conversation, you know, to Jim's point, there's always time to have the conversation. We want more people to experience this brand and these stories, but we're also very cognizant about who we partner with. Like, we have a really high bar for what we expect of the stuff we put out. We know that our community gives us like so much faith and they know when they get something from us, it's going to be a certain level of quality. So if we partner with somebody, we want to make sure that they understand what we're trying to accomplish big picture and that they can maintain that same level. I, I know, uh, when I was that intern, I think it's Cameron, he had a bunch of miniatures that were sitting there in the back in, in the wall. And uh, that made me go, you know, this, what a, what a sweet spot that would be. But even a thing like that, so the, the video game, which is, was a Kickstarter, I don't know, a couple of years ago, whenever it was. And uh, I think, I, it seems like uh, one of the folks most anticipated functionalities is they can kind of pop and swap there in the game, which looks, yeah. which looks really cool. Uh, but I, you know, I saw the miniatures, and I was, you know, you think about tabletop RPGs and all these things, and you know, certainly that I've got a list of things that I could say. Where's the this? Where's this? Natalie has the where's the dragon shirt on, which I think is a very important, important question. Where's the dragon? Uh, but that's the question. Where's the dragon? I can't answer that question. I don't know anybody's answering that question. There's the shirt. Yeah. There's on the table. There's a dragon on the table. Yeah. Yeah. He's beautiful. Yeah. Does it, Why are you ignoring the dragon? Oh. <laughs> Does it surprise you guys the popularity of everything having kind of like done things in reverse order? You, you didn't have a cartoon or a comic or a book or any of that to like platform off of and to have things where they are now and to be doing things in kind of reverse order. Does yeah. that? Yeah, like Jim said earlier. It's you know what, too? Crazy. It's, you know, when you think about it, you know, a unique story is really tough. You know, I mean, they all kind of work in the same way. What makes the difference between you watching a TV show with that same kind of story? It's the characters, right? So, to me, those, you know, these figures, especially the, the fact that they are able to be posed and certain, they have a character of their own. You know, just visually, 
And then you read the bio and you read portions of it that we hopefully will be meshing into a, a, a story that's compelling. But the story really is the story. The, really, the, the bulk of it is the character. Is the, are those characters speaking to you? And I, I feel, you know, this is like the first time I've seen figures like that really kind of have a personality, if that could be possible. And the fact that you're able to make what you want from them. You can appreciate what they are and you can make your own thing. You get to put some of yourself into that world and have your own way to personally appreciate what we do and also what you're capable of. And I think having that, again, that back and forth, the, the transfer of energy essentially and being creative with this stuff is, it's unique to this brand really and, and having everyone acknowledge everybody's work like it doesn't matter what level of talent you're at or you know what your favorite character type is it doesn't matter is a little bit of you that you're able to put into this world and that's a big part of it that's what i'll say actually i think what is the most surprising to me and has been such a huge part of the success is the artistic community my, and that's where i came from to be here, the artistic community that this line and this company has fostered. Like to meet people at events like this and hear them say that like, I've never had a toy line that sparked my creativity, that made me want to play with these things and create my own ideas. It's given me a kind of artistic enrichment that I've never had until now. That is incredibly fun. I think I have, uh, so I, I spent a number of, I played football and sports, and I spent a number of my life as a coach, and you hear the term coaching tree, right, and coaches, where it's like, this coach had these folks that worked for them, and then they became the coaches here. I think it's fascinating that if you really looked at you three guys, the tree of people that have been inspired, because a lot of, a lot of the customizers that all of us would buy stuff from also now are getting work in the toy industry and are designing toy, and a lot of them did just that, like like you two, came from, and it's almost like the horsemen have this tree of people that have been inspired by what you, you created, and are now going and creating their own things somewhere else. I think that's I think that's really fascinating. I like that. I think it's really fascinating. So I really think you could probably look at like you know Eric, for instance, who like he had stuff at Toy Fair, just like you guys at Toy Fair. And Eric Miller, and I'm like, man, how cool is that? Which is kind of a branch of the inspiration that however many years ago you decided you were going to share with the world. And I think that's, I, I think it, it's a good honor, I would say. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Even Jason from Animal Wars of the Kingdom, Spiro, he's never worked officially with the studio. He'll tell us <coughs> that he wanted to create his own toys and it was a conversation with Cornboy, where Cornboy basically was like, if you want to make toys, make toys. Do it. <laughs> and it got him to get off his ass and to make it happen. And got a booth in there right now with a whole bunch of monkeys. <laughs> and just to add to that a little bit more, it's it's the uniqueness of the Four Horsemen, the company, the brand. You guys, you do the three C's right. You have where you communicate, you have a great community, and you have the best customer service. Just so saying. Tooting it. In the words of Cornboy, we try not to suck. Yeah. Just, be glad, just be glad I'm not customer service and you got to get I'm, I'm sure if you're customer God. service, I, I could help, but you'd be like, no, you did it again. No, I have to <laughs> did do, you a do video again? repairing that every freaking day. Just put it on the shelf. Yeah, no, just be glad I, Diego I does very, customer service. We are very thankful all that for all that Diego does yeah, in every sure. aspect of the customer service, of the shipping. Like, there's a lot of coordination, a lot of little moving parts that he needs to have figured out before anything makes it out the door before anything goes up for sale. It's things that people don't even think about. The details are insane and he, he holds it down. Yeah. Best so just, move. Just sorry, just to piggyback off that, I'm gonna say that so I, I came up in retail for the most part of my work life, right? And you know, the biggest thing is customer service. And I think that's like the one thing with me last year, like I was always in the forestman, but like the first time I'm seeing you at a, like a, a toy convention, I think the experience I took from just the treatment of just even asking things and like, oh no, no, just hold off. Like, you know, the way y'all treat people, 
I think that's what won me over. And in the fact of like, you can tell like it's like deeply rooted. There are other lines out there where it's kind of that's kind of looked over, right? You just kind of deal with it. Like this is the one line that I can literally say like, you guys are approachable. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I can literally walk up to any one of y'all. Even though you don't know me from campaign, you'll speak to me like, hey, what's going on, man? Like, you, like, you saw me probably at Legion's Con, right? But you see me again, I don't remember, but you're still going to have that same conversation. So I think that is something that is deep through. You guys got it right. There's a lot of things y'all have gotten right. Like, well, seriously. Like, without all you guys, what are we, like, we, we can't do what I'm we do. I'm not doing this. We can't, we can't <laughs> do this. So it's like, we, you know, we know we need you. Like, you get to, you're a very important part of this whole thing. Really, you know, so. keeping you happy keeps us happy. Yeah, keeps everybody employed and getting. Cool if stuff you keep up liking what we do, we can keep making it. Yeah, yeah so. <laughs> well, I think you're inspiring the next. I can speak just for ours. Who last year and, and Joe has spent a lot of time with her and Jeremy and you know like somebody that that's that's a child that is likes to create and do things but has no doesn't really think that that's a. It's a pie, uh, a pie in the sky. Can I do this? And then she forced people to actually do it. And she can do elements of the things they can do. And it makes her, well, maybe that's a thing I could do. Maybe, you know, and whether or not she ever becomes a toy designer, it helps her get focused and think, I can do a thing. Because you can tell all you want. You can do anything you want to do or do this or that. But meeting a person that is actively doing it, that talks just like you do, and mine works the same way. I think that's also very important for, uh, you know, for the, for the, especially the younger generation that probably is yeah. not buying as many action figures yeah. these days. Yeah. Because this is, this is filled with all folks my age and not <laughs> my daughter's age. <laughs> I, I think that's really nice, too. I, I, I appreciate, uh, especially when folks have kids, that, you know, the, the, the phrase getting down on your love and you see you guys get down you actually get and talk to them and show them okay. it's, and see, you don't have to do that you know you just don't have to do that you, and I love it when we see like people come up to the tables as a family you know a whole group of them that are collecting they're excited for this the fact that it brings people together within their own families is that's mm -hmm. super cool and that's that's inside of us. Yeah, I mean, it's a really? nice, it's a very creative, I mean, you don't really want your kids and stuff, you know, going into that, I saw it on TV, now I want to buy it, you know, for myself, and it's just that rep representation of, of what they're marketing at the time. This is what goes back to more like the old-fashioned army men or whatever, where you really have, you can take those figures and do your own role play. So, mm -hmm. you know, it works great on the both levels. The older parents, they like collecting that stuff, and it's it's fine for the kids, too. You know, we always, we never get into the, you know, the bloody weapons or the gratuitous, you know, s silly joke part of it and that kind of thing. That's really not what we're, we're interested in. You know, we just want to make stuff that everybody can you know, uh, give to their kids and play with and collect and whatever they want to do with it. I think we got time. One more. Quick we'll wrap up. Kind of a quick question that ties it together. Um, the on the figure obscura stuff is basically any public domain property fair game for FO. Okay. It would. Are there any tributes that you guys have thought about doing <clears throat> on, like, you beat Masters of the Universe to death, because that's where, where, where you guys started that. And, and I think uh, from an interview I watched, or from, I, it might have been from one of the myth, uh, mythic conversations, sure. talking about how that was kind of running its course now. But have y'all thought about, in the Fisher-Price adventure, uh, for Fisher-Ice, or however it is, <coughs> Are there other properties that you guys have looked at and gone, we could do a fun tribute on that? I mean, one, one that comes to my mind is like Clash the Titans. Sure. I love Clash the Titans, and that seems like a perfect. So, just to dispel any rumors, I never said 
the, the Motu stuff was running its course. No, yeah, yeah. But the world, I mean, <laughs> we, we got bombarded the other day. Who was that from where? Because that got out in the community where people were like, Jeremy said they're done with that. And I was like, I never said no. that. <laughs> Why would you tell Jeremy to end the Motu? Like, Why did you not know, listen to the discussion? I don't remember what you said. I remember what you said. Because they don't have so many. Yes. That so play. that was not the yeah. gist. Yeah. The quick answer is we we have our own IPs that we're creating. The PowerCon thing is a unique, it's a unique situation where PowerCon is something we've been involved with since day one. This studio has had such a role to play in that particular property, Masters, for so many years that it's fun to do those little figures. And they've kind of created a little subline of their own. Um, I've long said that I have a love-hate relationship with those because when I meet people and they say, oh, Mythic Legions, you do all those master's tributes. And I'm like, we do 50 figures. <laughs> 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 you know, or that, why do you love-hate? It also brings a lot of new people into, so yes, that is something that is likely to continue, but we're not actively out there looking to do homages to other type of stuff. The, the Fisher Rice, that was a fun callback to a really old kind of thing, but the figure itself exists in different formats. That's one of the configurations that's kind of a throwback. I don't expect that you're going to see homages to Star Wars and you know, Clash of the Titans or all these other things. Um, you will continue to see Figure Obscura drawing from literature, mythology, all these different types of uh, characters that are in the public domain. Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bring back the birds. So, we have a, a, a lot of people here. Thanks everybody for coming. I know we got to get ready for the next panel. Thank you. These guys. Come by, come by, see another table. Keep continuing yeah, we'll the conversation. Table if anyone has any additional questions, get some pudding. There's still a few puddings. Finish this pudding.